Okay, welcome back to uh, the last part of this uh, 3D printed bronchoscopy simulator tutorial. Uh, so we've gone through the airway segmentation from patient CT. We've seen how to make it hollow and uh, orient it properly and, and generate manual supports inside mesh mixer. That was part two. Uh, and in this final part, we're actually going to prep it for 3D print. Uh, this process is uh, called slicing, and slicing refers to taking your 3D model and making it readable for a 3D printer by essentially taking your 3D model and uh, slicing, for lack of a better word, uh, the model into discrete planes of geometry. Uh, each plane corresponds to an XY, uh, a common XY plane with a particular height or layer height. And then once that uh, particular layer is done, 3D printer will move up one step or the equivalent of another layer and then start printing the geometry um, that is contained within that XY plane. Uh, you'll see it clearer in this in the segmentation that we're going to do here today. Or I'm sorry, the, the uh, slicing that we, we're going to do here today. Um, so for our slicing, we're going to do it for any 3D printer that can read a .g code file. Uh, so in the Mandible tutorial, we slice it for a MakerBot. Uh, which takes a .x3g file type. Uh, for this one, we're going to just uh, slice according to a .g code 3D printer. And this will encapsulate your Ultimakers, uh, your Deltas, um, and of course the, the TASs as well. Uh, the TASs which we run in the lab read uh, .g code files. So there's a bunch of different programs that you can use for this purpose. Uh, one of the popular ones is Cura. For today, we're actually going to go ahead and use uh, Slicer, and Slicer spelled, you know, with a th the three instead of the e. Um, so you, when you first launch Slicer, the link will be down in the description below. You're going to see this window. Um, you're probably not going to have these tabs, and it's going to look slightly different. And that's because uh, you need to turn expert mode on. I guess you don't really have to turn expert mode on, but if you want to follow me one for one in this particular tutorial. You will turn expert mode on because I have it on. Uh, just check off all these boxes, click OK. You'll need to restart Slicer and then it'll come up here. Um, what's important are your slicing profiles. And your slicing profiles are going to define the instructions that you're actually going to give your 3D model to send to the 3D printer uh, to print properly. Each profile is going to be specific to uh, the type of material that you're printing with and the 3D printer that you're actually using. Uh, and what I mean by this is that Inside Slicer's print settings, uh, you're going to define things like the nozzle diameter. If you're using multi-headed uh, extruders, you're going to have to set your uh, offsets so that uh, your colors don't run into each other. You have to be cognizant of what your attraction settings are, and they're going to be specific to the type of extruder that you use. Uh, your print bed is going to be defined in here as well. So obviously the TAS is not 200 by 200, it's actually 250 by 250, if I recall. Uh, you can define your custom g-codes, everything like that. All of the, all of the print profiles that um, we are going to be using can be found on this website, the, the LulzBot 3D printing website. I'll leave a link in the description below again for this. Um, so as you can see, they have every conceivable filament that they sell uh, with the profiles uh, in their documentation list. So for example, if we were doing PLA, being PLA today for the for the uh, airway, we're actually going to make it a pliable and um, like flexible material, a thermoplastic elastomer uh, called NinjaFlex. So NinjaFlex, I'm so sorry. We're just going to redo this. Okay, so for all of the filaments and for all of the profiles, which tell the printer exactly what settings to impart on a part that you're trying to print, if that's a weird sentence, uh, can be found here. Uh, on the Lulzbot website uh, where they sell their filaments. All their profiles that they have that are specific to these filaments will be on this page and I'll leave a link below. Um, so today for the airway we're actually going to be using NinjaFlex and NinjaFlex is a thermoplastic elastomer so unlike all the other filaments on this page it's actually really rather flexible. Uh, later on in this video I'll show you a comparison between NinjaFlex and one of the harder thermoplastics that we normally print with. And what NinjaFlex is going to allow our airway to do is expand. So if you think about the airway in the human body, it's not just a hard, rigid structure. Um, 
it's hardish, but it can still expand because there's the cartilage is it, it it can it can expand basically. Uh, we're going to impart our model with a little bit of this flexibility so that we can actually put a double a rather large double lumen tube uh, down uh, to to do our bronchoscopies with and. That allows us to do like a long isolation strategy if we really wanted to to try that, which we've done in the lab and it's it's quite successful. So in order to get the um, the print profile for Ninja Flex, for example, you're going to click on it. It's going to bring you up to the page where you can buy it, um, but you're going to scroll down until you get to Resources and Documentation. Click to expand. And then right here is where you're going to be able to find the print profile. So depending on what you, soft, slicing software you're using, so they have it up for Cura or Slicer, you're going to click either link, depending on the software that you're using to generate your cheat code. In our case, we're going with Slicer today, so you'll click that. And then it's going to take you to this page, Slicer. Select the printer. In our case, it's going to be the Lulzbot Taz. And then these are all the print profiles. Uh, so take a look at all the ones that they have on here. And if you're if you're missing one that you're trying to print with and it's not on here, um, you can you can look at their support forums. Uh, they'll usually have it. So here we are under the Taz flexible filament profiles. We've got the NinjaFlex right here, and you're going to right click, and you're going to save as. And what this is going to do is it's going to download this file as an INI file. And the INI file is a config setting, like this, and then just hit save. Load config, so here, here's what's going to change. So you can see all these settings that are just set in default for Slicer. Yes, speeds are all over the place, layers and infills, blah, blah, blah. Load, load config, and you're going to find it. So in my case, I already have it here. All I changed was an 06 nozzle instead of the 05. Um, we can talk about that in a later video, but it's just specific to my printer. So as you can see, the print bed has enlarged. All my print settings have changed. My speeds have been set completely by TAS, or recommend, according to the TAS recommendations. And this might not match yours completely because I've made some slight modifications, again, specific to my particular printer because each printer kind of needs like boutique settings. But the, the default uh, recommended settings from that TAS website is pretty good. And they're not just pretty good for the TASs, although they're made for that specifically. But if you're running this in something like an Ultimaker, then chances are it'll work too. The only thing is if you're, you have to be really cognizant of whether or not your printer is accepting a 1.75 millimeter filament or a 3.0 or 2.89, whatever you want to call it, millimeter filament. All the TASs use a uh, 2.85 millimeter filament. So we set that here. Well, it's a default three because they vary 2.89 to three. Uh, the MakerBots, for example, are 1.75 millimeters. And I'm, I think the Ultimakers are 1.75. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so check before you set this. Uh, the other thing you have to set is your extruder. So the nozzle diameter, like the one that we originally downloaded, was a 0.5 uh, millimeter nozzle. So that's how big, that's how much, that's the width of your extrusion. Mine is actually a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so I just changed this to 0.6. Uh, technically, you're supposed to change the your um, your extrusion multiplier, I think. Uh, yeah, your extrusion widths. But if you just leave it at zeros, it's just going to be uh, calculated by the program. By itself. So for today, um, we're really interested in maintaining our vertical shells, our layer heights, and our infill. Uh, this is going to be the three settings that we most look out for in the majority of our prints, I guess. Like it's a gross oversimplification of it, but for today, we're just going to go with that. So in terms of layer height, the recommended is actually 0.4 millimeters as a default. I would just leave it at 0.4 if you're going with NinjaFlex. If you're going with one of the harder thermoplastics, you can decrease this value uh, quite a bit. Like 0.1 is usually the, the lower end for all FDM machines that you can get a quality with. Um, and just lowering this value will give you a higher resolution on your model, so you get that reduction in the stepped effect. So you just get a higher resolution looking model. It just makes it look prettier. 
um, your perimeters. So it's split it up into vertical and horizontal shells. Um, this will make your model stronger. And if you increase the number of shells, it tends to look nicer. Um, it, it leaves fewer gaps anyway, if there was ever a chance to make gaps. I usually just leave it at two. Two is a good default. And then your infill defines how much material is going to be uh, inside of your model. Um, the less material you put inside, in the case of NinjaFlex, the more flexible it is. Um, it, it also makes it a little bit weaker, um, but it also reduces the amount of time that it takes to print, and the less material that you'll use. For the, our purposes today, 20% is fine. Uh, last thing, the support material. You'll find that Slicer can actually generate its own uh, support material, but unlike in Mesh Mixer, which we did in Step 2, uh, we can't tell Slicer to just um, put the support material on the outside of the object instead of the inside, and since we'll have no way of cleaning the inside of our airway, we want to generate our supports, as I showed you in Part 2, inside Mesh Mixer, rather than Slicer. Otherwise, for other models, feel free to use Slicer's um, uh, support material generation. It's pretty good. It is pretty good, even for NinjaFlex. Speeds should all be set uh, according to defaults, and you don't really need to worry about anything else. Um, it'll run at a 230. Again, this is default. And when you, whenever you see zeros here at either the bed or the extruder, that means whatever bed temperature your printer is currently set at, it's what it's going to run at. So at zero, it's going to just run at room. Um, if you preheat your printer to like 60 degrees and you leave this at zero, it's going to print at 60. And all of this looks good. Okay, so that's just a, the briefest overview for the settings possible. Uh, really what this is getting at is that we're going to make a G-code file. And these are all the things that you can control with a G-code. All right, that out of the way. We're going to go to add. We're actually going to put our model in. Um, I think it was airway edited. Let's do this. I'll warn you right now that, it, yeah, this is correct. I'll warn you right now that this green bar um, I wouldn't try and mess around with your settings too much because this is it actually calculating out your model uh, in real time, like for slicing. Slicer tends to crash if you do if you try and do too much at once. So I'm literally not even going to touch the screen until this thing's done. Uh, no, that's that's kind of a lie. I'll, I'll, I can explain like the windows so that we don't have to sit here in this awkward silence. Uh, main window. Uh, this is where the 3D model is previewed. Like this. So as you can see, there's our airway and there's all our crazy sports. Uh, over here, this is the file name. So airway underscore edited. True scale, only one copy. Copy is. Over here is the print settings. So of course, we're going to be printing with NinjaFlex. Filament definition is NinjaFlex, and the printer is according to whatever was up here. Uh, for our case, it's for the, the, the Taz, the Taz Lull spot. And we're done. No more green bar. That means we can. Um, breathe easy and it probably won't crash, maybe, sort of, hopefully. Uh, I can take you through these tabs really quickly inside Slicer. So this is your 3D window, like I said. It allows you to explore. Left click and drag allows you to move around your object. Mouse wheel in and out lets you zoom. Middle mouse click allows you to pan. And right click also allows you to pan. That is weird. Um, okay. Your 2D view is next to useless. Congratulations. Uh, your preview window may or may not crash slicer. Um, it allows you to just scroll through uh, and see your uh, the, each printed layer. So as you can see, each layer is specific to the X, Y, and Z coordinates, with Z being defined by your layer height. Ah, I'm so sorry if this is making any of you not uh, motion sick. So you can pretend, or you know that the, this is 0.4 millimeters high because we set it here. 0.4. And then as we step up one, and it also says 0.4 here. As we step up one, it's another 0.4, so this is now layer two. And it's a completely different set of geometries for this X and Y plane. And then up, and up, and up, and up, and up. So you can kind of preview your model. If your model is too big, um, and it's crashing your computer, crashing slicer, ignore this window, go straight to the layers. It's a little bit harder to parse this information, but it's exactly the same thing, but um, top down. So layer one, layer two, uh, layer, what is that, four, all the way up. I usually use this window quite heavily, uh, especially when it comes to models like this. What I'm looking out for when I scroll is that the things, nothing pops up on the screen out of the middle of nowhere. So, like, imagine that this is exactly what it looks like. I guess you don't have to imagine too hard. But let's say I suddenly moved up one step, so at 8, 17, whatever, 
and this gigantic triangle pops up in the middle of the screen. That tells me that what, however many layers this is, we suddenly have an object that's going to be printed in midair. That's bad. You want things to just not come out of midair. You want it to have this uh, gradual shape change, like this. It's very organic. Uh, normally, these uh, these small areas here freak me out when it comes to NinjaFlex just because of the material properties, and it's something that you just kind of learn along the way. But I cheated and I printed this model already, and it totally works. So spoilers. So at this point, I'm like, okay, good. Uh, it doesn't look like anything is printing out of midair. Everything follows a definite path. I'm happy with this. All you need to do is then export your G code. So export G code. And look, I already have one. Airway edited ninja. Save it. I need to turn that off, and I will apologize right now that that was super loud. So we'll replace it. And again, it's going to slice your model. Uh, the thing that just came up is the brim. I should have talked about that. Um, I can go over that quickly while it's doing this. So over here, it's skirt and brim. The skirt is just, it's going to extrude uh, this black part over here. It's not going to actually going to be black on your machine. It's going to be whatever color uh, of material you have. But it's going to extrude this, um, this path just before it actually starts in your uh, model so that you know that you've got a smooth... Uh, flow of material coming uh, coming out of your nozzle so that there's no weird gaps uh, once on your first layer, which is pretty crucial. I have it set to three. Uh, I, I find that that's totally okay to get a smooth uh, a sp smooth flow of material going, so that's okay. Okay, green bar is gone. G code has been exported. We can now minimize this and load this onto the machine. Um, for the task, I, I I use an SD card, like I'll, I'll just load an SD card in and then throw it onto the machine. Um, for you guys, you might want to just connect your machine to your computer and control it by like Repetier or Kira or whatever you want. I use an SD card or you know, Octoprint, Octoprint school. But that's it. That's all we have to do. And then from there, you put it in the machine and you check in on it every so often just to make sure that your model hasn't completely failed. If it has, it's really difficult for me to diagnose without seeing it, but um, you just have to watch it and then play with the settings if it comes to that, if you need to reprint it for whatever reason. Um, yeah, that's it. That Those are the very basics of Slicer. Uh, probably in the future, I'll make a better in-depth video of how to actually use Slicer and some of its more advanced features or fun features, but for now, um, that's a good enough start to actually get you printing. And again, these steps are also applicable to a wide range of materials, not just NinjaFlex. Um, any thermoplastic elastic, or any thermoplastics really uh, will follow the exact same process that we outlined here uh, as NinjaFlex. Different settings, but again, refer to the TAS website to uh, get those print profiles or look around in the forums. Or if you have a specific printer, chances are they have specific print profiles for their filaments as well. Uh, okay, thank you for joining me on this part. Don't go away because I'm going to be splicing in uh, videos of the printer running and proving that it's actually printing and working. And then we're going to test our model really quickly. I don't know why I almost exited this conversation then, so I will be right back. So this is what um, the TAS 5 uh, loaded with NinjaFlex looks like after printing the airway. We just started to print here. It's, uh, it's only been 15 minutes. As you can see, it's at 230 degrees, uh, nozzle temp, 60 degrees uh, centigrade um, head temp, pan is off, flow rate set at 100, and there it is trying to print all those um, crazy supports. And there you can see the uh, lower tip of the right lower bulk this, I think, and then there's the, uh, there's the left. As you can see with NinjaFlex, it comes out very slowly just because of the way the material handles itself. Um, but we'll see how this particular model turns out in a couple of hours. Alright, this is the example of uh, two different kinds of filament. On this side is a thermoplastic that's just commonly found in all uh, fused deposition model 3D printers. Uh, this particular one here is brown PLA or polylactic acid. So like the majority of thermoplastics, um, it's just a rigid, well, plastic. And if I were to bend this, it just retains its shape. 
Uh, unlike uh, your hard thermoplastics, you have a class called thermoplastic elastomers, of which NinjaFlex belongs to. And these are very flexible. Like, as you can see here, I can bend it and it'll return the shape. And what this is going to allow our models to do is have a little bit of give. Uh, and allow it to flex and be able to actually, well, move a little bit. Uh, and that opens up a wide range of possibilities for our models, like our bron bronchoscopy simulator, so that we can fit a wide variety of uh, lumen tubes down the trachea uh, of various sizes. And it, it more accurately represents um, cartilage than uh, just stiff, uh, nin uh, stiff ninja uh, <laughs> thermoplastics. Well, it looks like my fears were a little bit unfounded. Uh, as you can see, the airway that we made uh, in full segmentation completed pretty much perfectly. Uh, there's a little bit of spacing issues and lots of extrusion at the top where the geometry got smaller. But despite the incredibly sketchy supports, or at least what I thought were sketchy supports, this model actually turned out pretty well. Uh, in total, print time was rather quick, 3 hours 48 minutes. You can see there that I've left the printer on for 14 hours and 7 minutes. That's because I left this thing running overnight last night. But overall, the model seems okay. Uh, I'm going to take it off the build platform now, but I'm going to need both hands for that. Okay, I have pulled the airway out of the, uh, the printer, and this is the result. I haven't done anything to it, I just cut it off the bed. Um, so as you can see, the supports are still on. Uh, the model turned out fairly well, except for up here. Up here it got a little bit crazy just because I think um, the geometry got pretty small and NinjaFlex has a hard time rounding some very small corners. Uh, but the model turned out pretty good. Um, even it's hollow. Um, it's kind of hard to see down the, uh, the trachea, but it's, it's hollow. Uh, the back of the model turned out well as well. well that's a bad sentence. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I would try and reprint this though, uh, try and get rid of this. Uh, so with the Ninja Flex, as I showed off earlier, it is extremely flexible. So we can bend all of the different broncs or all the other, all the airways. It's very difficult to actually get consistent lighting in here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep that the freakouts down. Uh, so yep, yeah, very flexible. You can squeeze it, and it's it's pliable. So the next step would be to remove the, um, to clean up the model basically, just take off your supports. And once you do that, it looks like this. There it is, fully cleaned. So again, the geometry up here, not spectacular. I would try and fix that. Uh, what I've had to do actually is cut off just the, a tiny, tiny portion of the uh, opening to the trachea. As you can see, uh, this model is shorter than the other one. I swear this is kind of exaggerated cuts. Yeah, it's missing like a centimeter from the top just to just to widen the bore a little bit. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then I would go back into your uh, 3D model and try and give the uh, hollowing a little... You're going to try and make your offset for your hollow less than 2 millimeters in that case, like 1 millimeter, and it'll give you a wider opening uh, just, just naturally. But again, it's much cleaner now. Uh, it actually resembles an airway, and really if we're just making a bronchoscopy simulator, we're not totally um, we're not totally married to the surface quality of this since you're not going to see it normally. And then lastly, the test is whether or not we can actually put down a uh, lo double lumen tube into this model. So if I had made this uh, model out of a, a hard thermoplastic like the PLA that I showed from earlier, uh, there's no way that I could possibly fit a double lumen tube down this uh, airway without expanding it to a comically large degree, because the double lumen tube is pretty large. Uh, this is it. Uh, it's the one we have in the lab. It's just a 37 French. Uh, I think it's a left. Is it a left? Yeah, it's left. Um, but this is it. Uh, this is the one that we've tested all the other airways with. Um, Ideally, you'd want it to add a little bit of lubrication to this end so that it goes in a little bit easier, um, but I think this will just work out for today. Let's see if I can show this off because I've already done it. It works. Okay, let's uh, let's try and do the test fit for the double lumen tube. So, double lumen tube meets opening to the trachea. This is kind of tricky because of where my camera is. Uh, obviously, when you actually do your simulations, you'd be doing it like this, right? And you wouldn't be looking at at the trachea or the opening, 
this would be occluded like this, and you'd be trying to look at the monitor up there somewhere uh, with the bronchoscope. But just before we even get to that part, um, we're just going to see if it fits. There we go. So um, it's hard to tell, but this is actually expanding because it's a thermal, um, it's an elastomer, and we can go all the way in with a 37. Uh, for this particular model, it gets stuck right here at the bifurcation. Ideally, <laughs> oh my god, what a disaster. Uh, I, <laughs> ideally, you would want to, uh, you, you'd want to have the, your bronchoscope be able to travel down the left and the right uh, main stems so that you could be able to see here. In this case, the 37 was just a little bit too big to get down into your bronx, but you could just downsize from here because you know that 37 will, uh, will fit right down the trachea. So maybe like a lower gauge will actually allow you to, to go inside the, uh, the main uh, airways. Uh, bar barring that, if you really wanted to use this 37 or 39 or whatever you want higher up, if, uh, you would go back into your uh, digital model and mesh mixer and then like, once again change the internal hollowing offset to something like one millimeter instead of the two that we did. That way you get a uh, much wider bore and uh, you could actually get a larger bronchoscope down uh, if you just wanted to do a simulation. So, once again, the NinjaFlex allows um, this, it accommodates a wide range of uh, tube sizes and it gives you a, a somewhat realistic flex according, uh, relative to the cartilage. Not one to one, but I mean, it's better than just being a static and hard plastic. And then what you just need now is an occlusion as a way to occlude your airway. And you have yourself a simulator. Um, I will show you some pictures of ours and us actually using it to show everybody what a completed simulator actually looks like. Um, so this is just the same stuff that I kind of showed off in the first part of the series way back before we even did the segmentation. Uh, this isn't the airway that we just printed, um, but this is the holder. Uh, the holder is printed again from patient CT according to this chin and chest model. Uh, it's just meant to hold the airway and make the simulation slightly more realistic and give it the right angle uh, for the airway as well. There's just a cutout for the airway uh, that resides within this model, and you can actually swap the airways in and out. I would have shot a video for this, but all of our airway holders actually went to a conference this weekend, and they haven't returned home yet. Uh, once they do, um, hopefully, oops, sorry. Once they do, then hopefully then we can show this off. Uh, okay, um, so here's another view with the double lumen tube. Uh, this is the same one that I used in the video that you just saw. It has a 37 French left, and this one actually fits all the way down, both left and right. And once we actually go to bronch it, or scope it, or do the lung isolation strategies, uh, here you can see Dr. Maneri with the bronchoscope in one hand, and the uh, lung walk in one other hand, or one other finger. Um, the double lumen tubes inserted into our airway, uh, so you can't actually see it, it's occluded inside the airway holder. And then on the screen, or before we get there, so there's the scope light, uh, and this blue cable here is the uh, lung isolation. Once we actually look on the monitor, um, as you can see, uh, this is the easy block uh, when it's uninflated, and you, we're actually down into the uh, airway itself. Here it is uh, down the left main stem, and this is again looking at the monitor, and this is with an easy block. Uh, it's inflated to 5cc, so this side of the lung is occluded. And this is being taken from a bronchoscope. Uh, here it is in the right, and it is inflated, the left uninflated. Uh, this is the picture down the left main bronch without the balloon. Uh, again, left. Right upper lobe is up here. And then uh, this is just showing off the placement down the uh, right upper, down the right main stem. And then the uh, another right occlusion. And I think that's where my pictures end, more or less. Let's see. Uh, oh, uh, right block, left block with the Fuji, and that's it. So classic left bronc Fuji, that's what the title says, and a classic right bronc block Fuji. Um, so yeah, your simulator that you just printed, if you were to follow the tutorial one for one, is very similar to this one and would respond uh, just as well to a bronchoscope and a lung isolation and a double lumen tube. Uh, you might have to go down from a 37, as I showed in the video, or you just, you know, you make your 
your airway just a little bit wider, but that's the general steps that you should take if you wanted to make your own um, double lumen uh, lung isolation simulation bronchoscopy simulation trainer. Uh, in total, you'd want to do this because of the the raw material cost involved is basically negligible. So if we ignore this uh, airway holder here, which is fairly large, but still kind of cheap, I don't exactly know how much this would cost, but anyway, the simulator that we just printed uh, with the NinjaFlex costs less than $10. I'd hazard a guess that it's worth less than um, $5 in the materials that it's printed with. Um, the real investment here is the time that it actually takes to make one of these things and the troubleshooting involved, but hopefully the steps that I've outlined in these three videos uh, we'll reduce the number of stumbling blocks along the way and just make it an easier process to create one for yourself. And I'm pretty sure that the airway holder, if we include this one too, the entire setup here is like $20, probably less actually, because this one's pretty much empty. Like it's got a very low infill. Um, yeah, but that's it. Uh, it's a very simple model to create and we're finding it very useful in the lab. We're going through a couple of... Um, uh, experiments to actually validate the usefulness of this model, but so far the response from the residents and trainees has been pretty positive. So uh, we're excited to field more of these in the future and uh, develop these more. The next step is really to develop these uh, upper airways with different sorts of uh, pathologies or ideologies uh, so that we can actually see the difficulties with lung isolation strategies with um, uh, different disease states, for example. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through these three videos um, and the technical difficulties too. If you have any any tips uh, or comments or anything, yeah, you can leave them below the video or you can follow us at at sign uh, APIL underscore TGH uh, on Twitter. And soon enough, the website will be up, but uh, we'll see how long that takes. Uh, thank you guys again so much uh, for your patience and I hope you enjoyed this particular series. Okay, now really uh, goodbye.